All right, so here's my marked bowl, and you can see the marks on it. And the next step then is to round up. I have a, a saw like this, and it's easy to use. You position your hand like this, and you start your cut. If you use your visual field to keep an eye on it so you're cutting along the, the cut line, I'm going to bring this out to the edge like this. The reason I do this is I need the cut to follow the line very accurately. And the only way that works is like that. Then if you turn it around and position it like this, I can do the same thing in reverse. I'm going to use my finger at the top of the blade and I'm just making a score line. I'm not going to cut it all the way through. It's really important to be very careful with this stage because you can break the bowl. So if I do this like this again with this edge, start right at the top, line it up, begin the cut, and I'm just concentrating on where I'm actually continuing to make a new cut by following it down to the corner. Then I'll move it like this, and I'll do the same thing. I'm trying to keep this right along the black line visually. And these initial cuts then make it easy to stay in the groove because the saw will follow those grooves. And the slipping, one of the nicest things is if you do slip, it tends to slip onto the part you're going to throw away. The thing wants to slide down the, the side of the bowl until you get most of the way. Being out at the edge helps because then you're not going to run the saw into the board. All I did to make this elevated platform is put two pugs of clay down. You can be innovative. You don't have to have anything dedicated to this job. Okay. So I have the four cuts ready. So now, using a light even stroke, I'm going to cut back down to the corner again without cutting all the way through. And when I get close, then I'll go ahead and I'm going to do the same thing in this direction. And it's easy to stay in the groove now because you've got a, a groove to follow. And occasionally you may break one of these, so I always make extras. They're really easy to make. See what it looks like inside. Okay, I went that way. Cut, cut. Okay, now let's cut. Cut. Turn it this way. This is the way I was going. One more. Okay, now I'm going to turn it this way and cut in the other direction. And the cut is getting pretty deep now. In this condition, this is beyond hard weather. This leather, this is, I would say, probably on the order of, of the hardness of wax. Then I took a knife like this and I made a gentle score line right along here. The surprise is it cuts just like soap or wax at this stage. So I can cut this section all the way down. And then normally this just snap off if I get a little bit more cut. I don't want to break any part of the, the actual bowl away. There, I got that cut all the way through. So there's a cutoff section and there's a stack of them right here. And I go to the opposite one because the physical support that the um, rim produces will reduce the chances of breaking it if I do it symmetrically. I'm cutting this like this. Notice that I'm right under a very bright light too. That helps a lot.
that one's off. And I'm really, really careful on these last two because only the points are supporting them now. And this is the stage where you're likely to break the bowl. So I'm actually holding up on the foot rather than pressing down. Because I want to make sure that I don't apply too much force to the corners. Looks like it's just about there. Last one. This will be the most fragile of the, all of them because it's only lightly supported at the corners. I'm holding up very firmly on the bowl bottom. Won't quite come yet. Here it is, almost there. Good, that looks like it'll go. So now the bowl has been cut and you'll notice that it's a bit ragged. So what I did to make it smooth is I constructed a sanding platform. This is just a piece of, this is from a drum sander that you use to sand floors. You can buy those at any house that rents these. And I'll turn it this way so you see it, although I would actually do it facing me. Is if I position this this way, you see the corners don't touch, and here the center doesn't touch. So I'll, what I see from my side is if I keep contact evenly all the way along that, and just move this like this gently, what it does is as long as it's making full contact everywhere, this smooths the edge. And in smoothing the edge, that allows me to produce a very, very true line. This is absolutely a straight edge. You saw that it's straight because of the laser, and you know that it's perpendicular to the plane surface, so when this is viewed straight on, this is a perfect square, but viewed in this position, it looks like a pointed bowl. So the next step is to allow it to dry, and then what it's going to look like after it's dried is it's going to be a little bit rough and ragged. You saw that. So the next step I do is I take a little piece of scotch bright like this. and I'm going to go up onto the corners and work toward the corner and I'll round that slightly. And now what I'm doing is I'm rounding these surfaces here. Then I'll go to the corner here and round that and polish this surface. And this corner is very sharp, so I'll round it gently. And you have to be soft with this because you can break these really easily. So the dry clay um, polishes very easily with Scotch-Brite. And it has, since it's flexible, it produces a cushioning effect similar to what would happen with a plastic lip finishing tool, which means it rounds this rather than producing just a, a faceted edge. Then remember to do this edge too. And we're doing the same thing here. We're knocking off all sharp spots. It'll take glaze better. And it's easy in this bright light to see how if you've gotten it. You notice that this is hollow footed. What I tried to do is to make it feel like it's the continuous curve all the way through. And this was just a thrown bowl. So what does the finished thing look like? Well, here's one of them already fired and finished. It's exactly the way it looks, and it, because it's, I left it more lofted because during the firing process, gravity tends to pull these down because this is a porcelain. So here's the bowl, and this is what it'll look like.